Welcome back to Salt and Light Television's ongoing coverage of the 2014 Extraordinary Synod of Bishops on the Pastoral Challenges to the Family. For the past few days, the Synod Fathers and Delegates have been meeting in 10 small language groups. Now tomorrow morning, that's Thursday, the work of those language groups will be concluded and everyone will meet again for a general congregation where presentations will be given on some of the suggestions for changes or amendments to that original document. There's obviously much anticipation for that. Now today at the press briefing, uh, Archbishop Joseph Kurtz from Louisville and also president of the American Bishops Conference had this to say about what work in the small language groups looks like. The work we did, uh, we took seriously the fact that we were presented with a wonderful working document. And we understood that our task was uh, to bring together uh, the collected wisdom uh, that we had, and we did, we will be proposing a number of amendments. In essence, the approach that we took was this, that um, just as in our church, the way we pray and the way we believe is integral. So also the way we believe and the way we put our belief into practice in pastoral care. I would characterize the amendments or any changes to be threefold. One uh, would be to highlight the importance of the witness of, of uh, uh, sacrificial loving families today. I think that was a first thing. Secondly, uh, to make sure that all of our words are truly welcoming and, uh, and come uh, truly from the heart. And then uh, I think the third one was to locate clearly our, our pastoral avenues and our pastoral outreach as being located within the beauty of sacred scripture and our church teaching. Now, as we all know, the Synod is dealing with concrete and practical situations, some irregular situations that people find themselves in today. And that raises questions about how exactly the church reaches out to them and what good is present in them from the very beginning. Here's what Archbishop Kurtz had to say on that issue. I've been promoting this notion of, uh, of uh, restored confidence in uh, marriage and really identifying and promoting couples to be witnesses. And I would not promote a great divide there either because just as priests and bishops are not perfect and we all are called to witness, I think this is a call that stretches for many people. There's an awful lot of people in this world, people who we identify as struggling that deserve also to give forth witness of a faithful lived life. As always, we're speaking to some of the Synod Fathers and delegates inside of the Synod, and here now are a few of their perspectives. There's been a very strong tone of, of pastoral concern for people in difficult situations. Of course, it's not just about exceptions. We've got to also if, encourage people, normal Catholic parents and families who are living family life with its joys and struggles. So that needs to be endorsed big time, uh, as well as looking at, at the difficult situations of de facto unions, cohabitation and, uh, and other irregular sort of situations that people unfortunately find themselves in more and more in the contemporary situation. So we want to offer them a word of welcome as being part of the church uh, and also uh, encourage them to, um, to uh, use what is in positive in their experience to, to come to the fullness of what God would want for them as the church sees it in the sacrament of marriage or in a proper marriage union. We are uh, a minority, first and foremost, uh, in a big country where the majority religion is uh, Hindu. Uh, we have the other great uh, minority, I would say, and that is uh, Islam or Muslim. They are a minority, but a huge minority in the country. And the third in line would be the Christians in India, uh, and the others follow, like uh, you have the Sikhs and the Buddhists and the Jains. Uh, so uh, the uh, problems that we have uh, or the challenges that we have uh, would be to our uh, to, 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 to live our Christian, Christian faith and to stand by uh, 
uh, what the church teaches uh, with regard to marriage and the, uh, uh, the, the sacramentality of the marriage, the unity and the indissolubility of marriage uh, uh, in our country. But I would also like to say that uh, we don't have too many problems with regard to that. In that sense, uh, we have our own personal laws which protect uh, uh, the, the, the uh, teachings of the church. And, and uh, that way, uh, we are s uh, so far secure. We don't have to fight many battles with the, with the government and so on with regard to the basic principles upon which the, the, the church stands. Because the media has such an important role in disseminating the message of the Synod, we decided to speak to a few journalists who are here covering that story. And we asked them especially what they think their responsibility is for telling that story to the world. Yeah, well, there's a hermeneutic of the media, um, which is that it's all about whether the church changes its teaching on gays and uh, contraception, etc. But there's also another story going on here, which is that Pope Francis has decided to have this synod and really give it kind of power uh, and, and uh, authority to, to discuss the big issues in the church. And that's, that's a real story as well. Um, and I think this has been an exercise of collegiality bishops coming together to discuss important issues that are going on in their local churches and I think that's very important and it's not just about those kind of hot button issues if you like um, and that's been very evident that there's been a, a real discussion debate and that's fantastic and that's what we need and it's also the spirit of Vatican II coming forward. I guess we well we have to do as journalists to try to keep honest and be honest to what's being said and you know, distribute the message and try to analyze it without you know, inflating it or without playing it down. But at the same time, I have to say that the church has a responsibility of guaranteeing that we have everything we need to make our job as, I don't want to say as easy as possible, but definitely as clear as possible. Because what we are saying comes from something that we've been told in a way. We as journalists have the power of bringing things down to the public, to the audience. You know, there are thousands of Catholics out there, one, I mean, 1 1.2 billion of Catholics out there that are interested on this particular topic because it's a family. Family is an issue that involves everyone. You can't really be without a family. Somehow you, you came to be with family. Um, so in that sense, it's extremely interesting for the press, and we probably talked about it more than we usually would have on this at this time, you know, at this point in the scene. Well, I think the media has generally responded to the real the real changes that are happening here. I, I don't think it's an exaggeration to say that there are dramatic changes and shifts going on. Uh, of course, when you read a headline that says the church opens to gays and you, you see a photo of a gay couple standing in front of St. Peter's Basilica as if they're about to get married, well, then you know they've gone too far. Uh, as I say, there's always a risk of exaggeration, but I, I think in general the media's been pretty attentive to, uh, to the proceedings, and I think they're looking now to see you know, how the report issued yesterday is going to be qualified. I think they have to try and present what the church says about marriage and family life. I mean, families all over the world are, are in some difficulty. I think it has to do that. But at the same time, it has to uh, continue with this uh, pastoral language that has been developed. Hold those two things in, in tension. Perhaps not list a load of propositions, but give something for the local churches to, to discuss in the next year before the Synod in 2015. Now, Pope Francis doesn't attend the small language groups inside the Synod Hall during these days. And today, Wednesday, he held his regular general audience. The theme was Christian hope. Dear brothers and sisters, in our catechesis on the church, we now consider the object of our Christian hope, the fulfillment of God's promises in the coming of Christ at the end of time. St. John speaks of this joyful encounter between the Lord and his people using the image of the new Jerusalem coming down from heaven, prepared as a bride adorned to meet her husband. This spousal imagery contains a profound truth. By taking on our flesh, Jesus united humanity to himself, and at his coming, we will see the consummation of this mystic marriage in the wedding feast of heaven. The vision of the New Jerusalem also reminds that the church is meant, in God's plan, to be a city in which all men and women 
live at last in harmony and blessed peace. Christian hope, then, is our joyful expectation of the Lord's coming and the fulfillment of his saving plan for the human family. In every generation, the Church holds high the lamp of this hope before the world. Today, let us ask whether our own lamps are alight with the oil of faith and to what extent we live as credible and joy-filled witnesses to our hope in God's promises. At the conclusion of this extraordinary synod will be the publication of a new working document that will set the stage for the coming year in preparation for next year's ordinary synod. But we'll also have a very special celebration. On Sunday, October 19th, the final day, officially the final day of the synod, we will celebrate the beatification of Pope Paul VI. You can find out more information on Salt and Light Television's website. Be sure to tune in for that Mass. Finally tonight, amidst all the fascinating developments of this extraordinary synod, another event is in preparation, and that being the World Meeting of Families set for September of 2015. Earlier, we had a chance to speak to Father William Donovan. He's the official liaison from the Archdiocese of Philadelphia to the Pontifical Council for the Family here in Rome. The World Meeting of Families itself is, is basically uh, an international gathering to celebrate the beauty and the dignity and the importance of the human family. It was originally founded by Pope St. John Paul II in 1994 and it's in, it occurs every three years. So this will be the eighth World Meeting of Families, but the first time in, uh, in the United States. And since uh, his election, Pope Francis has really, one could say, maybe a keynote of his uh, Petrine ministry has been pastoral service to the family. His, uh, this uh, past year, his first meeting of the Cardinals, he asked them to concentrate on how to better serve the family. Here we are, the first international meeting of bishops, the first extraordinary synod. And uh, the topic again is how the church can be of service to the family, not only uh, strong families, but also families on the margins, families that are weighed down by poverty, by war, uh, by uh, challenges, uh, whether they're alcoholisms and drugs and so forth, uh, whatever failings that may happen that cause stress in the family. So we want to be able to have a pastoral approach that can best serve uh, families where they are and whatever struggle they, they are in. So then after this synod, of course, next year, next October, again in Rome, there will be a, a second synod. But between them will be this great international meeting of uh, families in Philadelphia in September from the 22nd to the 27th uh, in 2015. And that's it for our coverage this day of the extraordinary synod of bishops on the pastoral challenges to the family. For Salt and Light Television, I'm Sebastian Gomes in Rome.